I'm going to be demonstrating a way to visualize the standing wave patterns inside of a microwave oven. Basically, inside a microwave you have a magnetron that creates microwaves that are inside the enclosure of the microwave. And these waves interact with each other and they have constructive and destructive interference. In some places you have a wave where it will be constructively interfered with such that it will just be a standing wave and you have uh, a high intensity region within the microwave where it's much stronger than other areas. And likewise, you'll also have standing waves where they destructively interact with each other and you'll have basically a dead spot where there's absolutely no heating going on at all uh, because the waves are 180 degrees out of phase with each other. So what I'm going to do is I cut out this piece of cardboard that fits right inside the microwave and this will pre prevent the turntable from actually rotating. The whole purpose of the carousel in here in the first place is because of these standing waves. If you didn't have that and you had a large piece of food on here, the parts of that food where the standing wave are at, if they're constructively interfering, we get much hotter, whereas the parts of the food that were in the destructively interfered with waves would essentially be getting no heat in at all. So this turns and allows the food to pass through both regions of constructive and destructive interference. So in order to make the point though, to put this in so that cannot operate. Okay, so what I have here, and this is the key to it, is some thermal paper. This is basically just what you find in a normal receipt printer. It uses uh, heat to turn the paper dark, and uh, that's what we're using here. I have some water in the spritzer bottle. I'll cut, get the paper wet with that. That way the microwave will heat up the water, which in turn will heat up the paper and turn it dark where the constructive interference patterns are at. So I'll cover this cardboard with paper and then we'll put it in the microwave and see what happens. Okay, so now I've covered the piece of cardboard with the thermal paper. Uh, it does overlap some places more than others, so that could affect how the pattern is represented because if it's a little bit thicker, there's going to be more water in that area, which means it's going to take it a little bit longer to heat up, so it could affect how the pattern shows up, but uh, we'll try it and see how it works. So the next step is take some water, just regular water. I'm going to try to evenly coat it. Once again, it needs to be even because if you have one area that's more damp than the other, it will take a little bit longer to heat up, so it won't quite be an accurate representation. So I'm going to spray it from a little bit away. And this paper is kind of a little bit waxy almost. So let's soak in. It's kind of curl on the paper too. Let me try to rub it in to get it even. Yeah, that's pretty good. And now I'm going to stick it in the microwave and wash my hands off before I do it. Okay, I'm going to turn off the lights and then turn the microwave and then focus it so you can see inside. So here we go. Let me focus it on the inside. See it turning? That's where standing waves are. That's the importance of the turntable. I don't want to start a fire, but we'll let it run a little bit longer and see what happens. So it's turning black. It looks worse than it is. It's not actually charring. It's just turning black because of the heat uh, reactive or thermal reactive dye in the paper. But you can see there's a strong standing wave off to the left hand side of the frame and then two off to the right hand side. And it appears like that's really the main places where it's actually heating at. So let's see if I can focus this a little better. So that's a pretty good representation of where it's at. It's actually forming more little ones. And one thing I remind you is this is just in a two-dimensional plane. There's obviously a three-dimensional volume from the bottom to the top of the microwave. So another thing I could do is maybe try this experiment again with the cardboard at mid-level or just a few inches above the surface where your food would typically be at. I'm going to go ahead and stop it now. Okay, so there you have it. 
That is, I think, a pretty good demonstration of the importance of the carousel. It's not very warm right here. And right there it's hotter and dry. So. So there. That's almost something you could hang on your wall. It looks kind of like a face almost, doesn't it? Get a picture frame and frame that. So that is a demonstration. Okay, I'm performing this experiment a second time with the thermal paper at more of a food level height. I've got it about two inches above the bottom of the microwave, and we'll see if the pattern is a little bit different this time or not. So I'm going to go ahead and set the time, close the door, and shut off the lights, and we'll see what happens this time. It could be a totally different pattern, or it could be fairly similar. Let me actually lower the camera a little bit. Okay, so we still have that one in the center. Okay, a little bit different pattern this time. There's a concentration in the center, off to the left side. Okay, so this is a much more interesting pattern at this level. And you can see why that carousel at the bottom is so important, because it will spin the, th the food through all of these hot areas as it goes around. I think next I'll put some of the thermal paper directly on the carousel and we'll see how that works as it spins around. We'll see if it gets us a better pattern or not. So those two have merged off to the left. I think it's a pretty good uh, demonstration showing you just how small the areas are that actually receive a high concentration of the microwave energy. And I'm going to call that good enough for now. Okay, so there's our pattern from about two inches above the bottom of the microwave surface. Very interesting. Here we'll be demonstrating how the carousel actually helps uh, even the heating out by passing the food item or whatever's in there through the standing waves. Hopefully this one should show more percentage of its surface black, meaning that it's been heated. So we'll set the timer, turn off the lights, and try it again. Okay, so you can see it getting dark in the center. So that central area has been passed through a standing wave at some point. You can see how it's actually working extremely effectively, and this is why most microwaves have a carousel. So you can see the entire center right now is black. The edges around it are not quite so black, meaning that there is a central hot spot, and I'm betting that's by design that the center has the uh, most intense pattern in it. So I think that's a very good demonstration right there of the importance of the carousel. Let it go a little bit longer. Okay, I'm going to stop it now. Okay, so that right there shows very good how that works. So you can uh, compare this one. This was the one that was two inches up from the bottom. And compare that with this that was on the bottom with the carousel spinning. So, pretty big difference.